Hello, I'm Erin Halverson, and welcome to Rag Drugs by Erin. Today we're going to be doing something just a little different, which I try to give you some new things. We're going to be making a denim rug. Um, I love denim. Absolutely love jeans and denim. Um, just can't get enough of them. And I've attempted denim in the, few, uh, in the past and been not very successful. I am working on another project, and I have had to stop and I will continue to finish that project and share it with you later but it cramps my hands to be very honest with you and uh, I'm going to show you the techniques that I did that made this possible and they might be helpful to you and give you some ideas of making your own rug. This is an oval one you could use denim for other shapes as well but this is the standard size we're going to go through this fairly quickly but let me talk about the tools that I use and what made this possible. First of all um, this is stretch denim, denim. So it's not crazy stretch denim, it's just denim with a little give, okay? So there's not a lot of give, um, but you know, old jeans, a lot of times they didn't have stretch. Newer jeans, a huge percentage of them have stretch in them anyway. So you could use salvage jeans if you wanted to. I just didn't have enough of that. I um, bought some uh, denim at a Joann's that was going out of business and I got it for a scream and I also found some at a yard sale for a quilter who decided she wasn't going to quilt anymore so I really got a good deal on that too. So the center part is done in two inches strips and I was able to do that for purposes to make my money go farther and my fabric go farther I switched it over to one and a half inch strips that's what this is and I got this little sparkle in here I just fell in love with this uh, denim it just looks so fun and um, anyways then so the center part is in two inches and this part is in one and a half inches let me talk to you also about the, what else I did to make this feasible and then I'll show you how I made the rug as well first of all um, I Get, talk about our tools. This is something I wanted to share with you. This is you can find this on my website. I have a few other uh, patterns or designs on the front too. This is a little crochet bag that I had made for me and for my website, and it keeps its two compartments. Um, got my scissors in here and my tapestry needle that we'll use to finish this. Here's some stitch markers. I sell those on my website as well. Um, nothing expensive, just something that I'm using an awful lot more of. And then we have the second compartment back here that I keep my hooks. And you can see I even have some longer hooks, bigger hooks that I've had made for me um, and that you can see on my website as well. But here, let's show these two hooks. This is what I want to show you and this is what made it possible for me. My guys, um, particularly my husband, he spent time working with me because he knew I wanted to make a denim rug. These are 20... Um, approximately 21. This is the one that's a 21. This one's just a, a little bit smaller. Um, I have both of these available at the moment. And he carved these for me because I was looking for something long enough. And also, I had found larger ones that I had ordered before, and I didn't like what they did because most of them have this more point on the end. When you find a bigger hook, they have a bigger point. And I think that's for people that use it for bigger yarn. And um, it's pretty and it looks nice, but I found it to be a, a, it was killing me because every time I pulled out, I had to go over this little, because this is a, you know, a pretty tight thing, I had to pull out a little farther. And by the time my wrist was really getting tired. So, um, you know, I said, can you help me out here? And uh, my husband was willing to help me out, and he worked on this. And uh, these are available on my website as well if you decide you want to make a denim rug. Also, two to three inch strips if you want to make a really thick um, rug with regular fabric or possibly even a flannel or a dense material. Or I've heard some of you talking about that you're using... Um, curtain material or upholstery material or use you may want to find something like this or go to my website and buy something but you're going to need a bigger hook in most instances some of you might not have problems with your hands and your arms I want to do this a good long time and I'm not uh, a young little girl anymore and I have to kind of baby myself just a little bit especially if you do it a lot and a lot of people that are into crocheting or rug making really spend a lot of time doing it so we're going to put this to the side and I'm going to show you how to finish this at a later time but we're going to have to get started and talk about our tools a little bit more we talked about the hook already that I'm going to be using here is a good pair of scissors and you're also going to want a tapestry needle so get a 
plastic one, you've heard me say before, if you've seen my other videos, you want a metal one. This is a number 13. You could also get a 16, but I prefer the 13. It has a nice dull edge. So we'll put these to the side, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I used uh, the method that cut and cutting the the sheet yarn in one long strip, which you can see that video where we had them sewn, and this is a one and a half inch. And let's go ahead and get started. So you're going to. Yeah, by the way, my material was all washed beforehand, twice before I started. So you may want to make sure that you wash it at least once. So you're going to take the long end and cross it over. You're going to be doing a slip stitch or a slip knot. That's a little bit long. I'm going to do it a little bit shorter. I get a little bit crazy with my long. So you cross over with making it so long. I just, I've had a couple instances where I wish I had it longer and now I don't dare do anything but that. Okay, you're going to put it in there. Remember not to make it too tight. You're going to have your tail in your hand. And this one is only going to require six chain stitches to get started. So you're going to cross over. One. Two. Make sure it's loose. Three. Four. Five. Six. That's all we're going to start with. Then you're going to flip your work. You're not going to go into the hole that you're in. You're going to go into the very next hole. That's why you need to make sure it's loose. Pulling that off. Sorry. I didn't talk about it. I was just focused instead of doing it. Let me talk about that. You go into your hole. You cross over. Pull it through. One, two. Going to cross over and pull them both off. That's a single crochet. Here's your next hole. Go in. Grab your material. Pull it through. So that's where I was having the problems with those long other ones that I would had bought. They were so pointed there, I was getting exhausted. You know, you do it one or two times, it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but you do it for the whole rug and you're pretty tired. Cross over and pull them both off. That's the second crochet. Single crochet. Into that hole. Grab your material. Have two. Cross over and pull them both off. This makes such a nice rug under your feet. It is really sturdy. It can go in so many rooms. And those of you who love denim can put it anywhere, I'm sure. Because I know there's a lot of people out there that like denim like I do. I have a friend, Kim, and she's always, when are you going to do a denim rug? When are you going to do a denim rug? Because she loves denim like I do. I think she even loves it more than I do. So, Kim, this is for you, my dear sweet Kim. Okay, so you're in the last hole, and then you're going to go three times. Well, normally I go three times. Let's see how many I'm going to go into this one because it's so thick. That's the second time. Seems like I did more. Every time on this rug I had to do more than what we did in the standard rug. So that's two. I think I did four on this. We're not doing we're leaving the tail the way it is at the moment. Let's see. No, I think we can do that. We're going to hide this tail along. We're going to lay it along the side here. Instead of weaving it in like my original over rugs have done, I am now just laying it across. Go into the next hole. Pull it through. You're just single crocheting. Now you could completely keep writing this so you have this. I like the variation. Some of you will not. You're going to all want to write it. Some people... I have another friend um, who makes beautiful stuff that she has watched my videos and we've become friends. Um, and Kathy is fanatical about making sure that she has them all with, um, this way. And her stuff is beautiful, but uh, that's just not my personality. So here we go. 
you put it into the next hole and you're still hiding your tail. We're going to go around this corner and then we'll switch over to a little bit bigger version. If you need more detailed of how to make an oval rug, you could always go to um, watch uh, my Beginner Oval Rug 101 and they see that. Okay, so here at the end again. So you're going to go into this hole and we're going to have to put more than one stitch into this hole. So there's one in order to make it around this hole. Still got that tail that we're using. We're going to go another one in here. You can see even with this hook, it requires a little bit of struggling with it. But the end product, and it moves along because it's so thick very quickly. Oh, that rug also had five and a half yards or six yards of material used. Okay, so we put two in here. We're going to come around here and put two more over here to get around this corner. Make sure you make it loose enough. There's still that tail. Sometimes you have to snip it at the very end. And I put two in here. And you're still hiding that tail. Yours, you may already have yours gone. That's fine. Okay. So we're going to move on. I'm going to grab my next rug at a different stage, so you can see. Just working in a bigger stage around the corner because a lot of people struggle with this, so I wanted to show you more detail. So here we're coming to the corner again. Probably going to put two in here. You have to do the extra stitches as you're coming along the corner so it doesn't cup up. There's one in there. We're going to do another one. On the straightaways, you never add another stitch. There's two. And we actually have three holes here. There's one here and there's one over here on this corner. I'm not sure if we're going to do one here or two, so let's see how it looks. See, two got it there. See how it's ready to go in? And I think I'm going to put two there. In some instances, you might want to put just one and then go to two. But see how that's pulling like that? And it's not ready to feed right in. I think it's going to be too much pulling. I'm going to go ahead and put a second one in there. So there's just going to be two stitches in all three of those holes. I keep on trying to want those sparkles to be seen. They're just so darn cute. And I thought, I was worried about that sparkle on my feet being a problem and it isn't. Uh, you have a little bit of a festive thing going on here while you're working, but it uh, never hurts to be happy and festive. And I also thought it might hurt my hands, and it hasn't. Uh, the little sparkles have not hurt my hands at all. So here we go. We're going to make it around. So we had three holes, and we put two in each one, and we made it around there. Okay, and you see that's still laying nicely. So we're going to go back to the big rug and talk about that edge around the corner, and then we're going to finish it, and you'll be able to start your own project. Um, thank you, Lyle. Lyle's my husband, also the maker of the hooks. <laughs> He's the everything to me. He's amazing. I try to tame that down because I think people get sick of hearing how amazing my husband is. That's who he is. 28 years of marriage. And He's my world. Thanks, Lyle. Okay, so you can see, let's talk about that. These were just one single crochet all the way across here because it started flattening out, I noticed, my corners, almost getting more of a rectangle look. And I really had to put a lot of them as they come around this corner. Make sure you get enough or you're going to have a problem putting two single crochets in these holes. Then we kind of almost started a straightaway. If I continued to make this rug larger, you would have had a bigger straightaway and you would have almost a rectangle. So let me go ahead and do um, 
I think what I'm going to do is I wanted, I thought this would be a great place to finish it because I really like to finish my rugs on an arch when I can. You don't notice it so much. So we're going to go ahead and finish it right here and um, see how well it blends. So you take your hook out. Oh, I know what I thought would be a good thing is I think I'm going to do a slip stitch. So instead of doing a single crochet, I'm going to end with one slip stitch and then use my um, tapestry needle. A slip stitch is I'm going to grab the material and just pull it through like that. So it's not a single crochet because I wanted it to kind of taper it down and I was afraid it would be just too much of a reduction. So if you come right in here, Lyle, and see this real quick, and then you can pan back out if you want. See how that's blending quite well? See, that's going to blend in really, really well, and you're really not going to see that very much. So I'm going to trim this just a little bit because this is too long to work with and um, show you how to finish it. If you've seen my other rugs, it's going to be very similar. It's going to be the same, just bigger. It's also going to be more tugging because it's more resistance. So here's your slip stitch. I'm going to want to try to maybe feed it through this top just a little bit to blend it along. See how I'm kind of almost grabbing it like this? All right. See how it's there? I've been blending in it. Now to add a little more security to it, I'm going to then feed it in like this through these stitches to add more security so it won't come undone. You see how it's really hidden well. Also, um, you can go to my website, ragrugsbyerin.com. Besides having my hooks and my crochet pouches, I have bags, and I also have um, some of the rugs that I've made. I've given away a lot and sold a few, not very many. I don't really sell my stuff very much, but I do have some there for sale. And uh, I mostly teach. That's what I do. And uh, selling a few of my products will help subsidize me because I don't make a lot of money doing this or YouTube. Um, I did it to help you and so you would have the knowledge that I so enjoy. Um, however, it's gotten to the point where I'm having to subsidize myself just a little bit. So if you see something there and really the hooks, um, I just had to share those with you. They're just uh, made all the difference for me to make this rug. So once you've fed it through far enough, you're going to give it an extra little tug like that. You've seen me do that in other ending videos if you watch my stuff. You're going to cut that off, give it a tug back, and it's hidden. So there we have it. I don't know if it's an oval or if it's a rectangle or what it is, but it's a denim rug, and I'm really excited about it, and it's really very pretty. So I'm hoping that you'll get the opportunity to make one of these. All right, you have a great day. Subscribe if you haven't.